Bye! Tara Evans said, waving to her elder brothers. It was her turn to do the shopping this weekend for the household needs. She stumbled every now and then on the uneven brick path that led toward the town square. Children ran up and down the path, dragging balloons from them. She watched in awe at how they ran without tripping, unlike her. She was always tripping over things. The ground, carpets, even her own feet. She wasn't clumsy all the time, but she did have her moments. The square was filled with customers. Anyone could bet there were thieves scattered among the masses. Tara made her way to a small fruit stand and spoke with the shopkeeper. I need everything on this list, she said, handing the lady a small piece of paper with the things her brother Ember had written down. She was an honest girl, making sure that she had only touched the food after she bought it. The woman searched the paper, and Tara moved her basket toward her every time she moved it to pick a piece of produce. Tara felt the weight shift with each item placed in the basket. The five of them lived together, Tara and her four big brothers. Ember was the eldest of the Evans, and he supported them the most. He worked as a blacksmith and slept most of the day when he wasn't working. Their late father taught him the trade of creating swords before he was taken from them. The girl was snapped out of her thoughts when the woman handed the list back. She dug through the pockets of her black leggings before pulling out the correct amount of gill and handing it to the smiling shopkeeper. She waved goodbye and then left on her way to another shop, repeating the same habit of purchasing the food. Slow, that was the pace she did things at. Rushing was too much, and Tara was confused if something was rushed. She was strong enough to hold her own in a battle, but too weak of a stomach to harm another. Everything about her seemed contradictory. Tara was a walking paradox. Tara returned to her house and left the food on the table, then quietly exited before she was noticed and questioned by her family. The evening sunset caught her eye. She left the house late, around four o'clock earlier that day. Often, she enjoyed watching it fall behind the green, hilly mountains. She left at the exit of the city and sat at the stone fountain, watching the deep sunset. The sky turned red and orange as the sun eventually disappeared beyond the hills. Her gaze averted to the falling water from the glistening fountain. She wanted to reach out and touch the smooth surface, to give it imperfection. Things were too calm in Alexandria. Too quiet. She longed for something miraculous to happen. Something fun! However, she was ordinary, just like any other girl. She had no special talent, and she was slow. She wanted to leave Alexandria and find an adventure, a place to belong. However, who said that every girl gets her dream? You're a loser, brat, is what Ember said when teasing her. I am a loser. But I'm a slow loser, she thought. Looking up from the water, she spotted a shadow from the distance. A cool, calm stride accompanied the shadow, bringing it grace. She observed things around her and realized that she was the only one left in the place surrounding the fountain. Dodging away from the fountain, she hid behind a few crates. She peeked over the top to see the guards had admitted the stranger access to return to their homes. Closing the gates, the stranger stopped by the fountain and seemed to talk to himself. Peace is but a shadow of death, desperate to forget its painful past. Though we hope for promising years, after shedding a thousand years, yesterday saw the promised years. And while the moon still shines blue, by dawn it will turn to scarlet. What an auspicious day for Alexandria. Garnett's ascension to the throne has brought hope and peace to this kingdom. The people are overjoyed. They believe a wonderful future is ahead of them. But the celebration is over. It's time to really light things up. Your former master is here, Bahamut. Play a requiem for her. The next thing she knew, there were loud booming noises. Tara had no time to leave her hiding place fast enough to take cover. Darkness surrounded her sight as she fell unconscious. Something very hard and very heavy fell on top. Her eyes strained as she opened them. The first thing she saw was ruins. 
Alexandria was in ruins. She blinked, but the image only burned neon shapes into her eyes from the light reflecting off of the weathered buildings. There was something holding her down to the cold, uneven brick. She winced as she turned her aching neck to see that a large crate broke upon her back. She felt her body tingle in pain and slight numbness, struggling to stand. Her vision hazed, barely allowing her to see the stranger starting to leave. She quickly stood up straight and ran towards him, ignoring the pounding in her legs that threatened to handicap her movement. She tripped on one of the uneven bricks on the ground and fell forward behind him, managing to catch his sleeve, making contact with the ground. He turned toward her from the movement of the sleeve that clutched tightly in her grip. W wait Tara breathed from strain. A cold hand clenched around her throat as the stranger lifted her to her feet. What do you want? he asked in a malicious voice. She shut her eyes tightly as the pain shook down her body. What did you do to the city? Tara asked, struggling to breathe and to get his hand off of her neck. It felt weird that he was touching her, as if his hands were dirty with invisible mud. She glanced down to see his hand were perfectly clean. The man's eyes shined with deep blue elegance bewitching his graceful form to a zenith of beauty. Tara felt ashamed, having deep brown eyes, eyes she related to the color of feces. She hated how she looked, and this man caused her to feel inferior to him. Hating that, she wished that she had never made contact with him. A smile played upon his features. Her neck starting to burn on the side, he dropped her from his grip, and she winced landing with a thud, hitting the pavement with her already aching butt. The girl strained to look up to him. She placed her hand to her neck, which burned like fire where he had touched her when he smiled. A large dragon swooped down, causing her body to go frigid as she stopped her end from her neck. <gasps> Was he going to attack her with it? Instead, he mounted the dragon, sparing her one glance as she watched her vision Hazed yet again, she fell backward, landing onto the bricks. Her body was fatigued and racking 